My worst nightmare. My husband caught me in my affair red-handed and then did this with my AP. Hey, Reddit, using a throwaway account because I do not want this associated with my main account. I need advice on how to save my marriage as I am in a real binder here. My husband set my affair partner's car on fire and then kicked me out of the house and I genuinely don't know if there's any way to save my marriage. My name is Anna and I'm a 29-year-old woman. My husband's name is Richard and he is a 28-year-old man. Richard and I met in college and we were instantly attracted to each other. We dated passionately until we decided to tie the knot about a year ago. And for the past year of our marriage, it was pure bliss. Except for one significant fact. I was cheating on him. Richard was always deeply engrossed in his tech career, always tinkering with codes and algorithms, and that left me with plenty of free time at home. He earned more than enough to cover our bills, so my role naturally shifted to managing our household and the house chores. You see, Richard was always off doing his thing, and I was left at home having to entertain myself, feeling pretty darn lonely. I tried all sorts of stuff to keep busy, like painting, gardening, and experimenting in the kitchen, but none of it really stuck. It was like a cycle. I found something new to do, got excited about it, and then boom, back to feeling empty and craving real connection. I missed having someone to hang out with, chat, and just have a good time. It wasn't that I didn't get why Richard was so busy. I did. But it was tough being on my own for long stretches of time. Loneliness hits hard, you know. I just wanted someone to share life's moments with, laugh together, and feel connected. It was like this constant battle against quiet, empty moments that seemed to drag on forever. So how did I meet my affair partner? Well, you see, back in high school, there was this guy, let's call him Mark. He was the type who could charm anyone, but behind that charm was a mess of drama. Mark and I had a turbulent relationship, lots of cheating, drugs, and disrespect. It tore me apart, and I knew I had to break free from that toxic cycle. I broke up with him right after we graduated high school. Then I went to college where I met Richard. He was steady, kind, loyal, caring, and respectful everything Mark wasn't. We fell in love and got married, leaving the chaos behind. Life with Richard was peaceful until Mark showed up out of nowhere. Mark resurfaced like a ghost from my past. He reached out to me and apologized. He said he didn't know I was married and that despite that, he still wanted to meet up and apologize in person. Despite my hesitation, curiosity got the better of me and I agreed to meet him for closure. Meeting Mark was like opening an old, dusty book filled with memories. Some sweet, many bitter. We reminisced about our high school days, the drama, the laughter, and the friendships that either faded or evolved. It felt oddly comforting to connect with someone from my past, especially during those moments when Richard was buried deep in work. Loneliness has a way of creeping in, even in the happiest of marriages. Richard tried his best to be there for me, but his demanding job often took his time. So when Mark suggested staying in touch, I saw it as a lifeline, a way to fill the gaps when Richard couldn't. Little did I know how dangerous that lifeline would become. As Mark and I got back in touch, we started talking more and more. It became a routine for me to check my phone constantly, waiting for his messages. This new habit didn't go unnoticed by Richard. He asked me why I was always glued to my phone and I made up a story about getting into content creation, which seemed to satisfy him. The truth was I was enjoying the attention and conversation with Mark, especially during the times when Richard was busy with work. It felt like a breath of fresh air amidst the boringness of my daily life. The more I chatted with Mark, the more I found myself pulling away from Richard. It wasn't something I planned. It just kind of happened as our conversations deepened. Mark seemed to get me in ways Richard didn't. Or maybe I just never opened up to Richard like I did with Mark. We talked about everything under the sun, creating a bond that felt familiar yet thrillingly new. I knew I was drifting away from my marriage. Mark's understanding and attention filled a void I didn't even realize existed. It wasn't just about the excitement of a secret connection. It was about feeling truly heard and valued in a way that was different from my relationship with Richard. I confided more in Mark and I unintentionally distanced myself emotionally from Richard. It was like building a separate world where I could be someone else, away from the routines and expectations of marriage. Mark hadn't really changed much since high school. He was still into drugs and you couldn't always rely on him. But he had this charm that drew you in, made you forget about his flaws. He seemed more grown up now, but you could still see glimpses of his old self. Back then, I wasn't the most outgoing person. Mark's popularity helped me make friends, but they were more like acquaintances. People liked being around us because of him. After reconnecting with Mark post-marriage, I found solace in our talks. It felt good to have someone to chat with, someone who seemed to get me. I didn't think too much about his faults. I just enjoyed the connection we had. 
Looking back, I see that I was looking for something outside my marriage, seeking comfort and attention. Mark became an escape from the routine, a way to feel special again. It wasn't about him being better than Richard. It was about feeling understood and valued, even if only for a while. As I hung out more with Mark, our talks weren't just limited to texts or calls anymore. We started meeting up in person, hitting up coffee shops, catching a flick, or just wandering around town. It felt good to have someone to share these simple joys with. Mark's outgoing vibe rubbed off on me and it boosted my confidence and made me more willing to try new things. I found myself stepping out of my comfort zone, exploring new places, and enjoying being with someone who got me. Our chats weren't just about small talk. We talked about movies, books, life experiences, and more. It was very refreshing to have deep conversations and feel mentally stimulated again. It was like unlocking a part of me that had been dormant for a while. These hangouts with Mark brought excitement and freshness into my routine, something I had been craving. It was easy to get caught up in the fun and forget about the possible consequences, just relishing in the companionship and shared interests. Mark and I kept up our hangouts, just enjoying each other's company. Despite the warning signs waving like crazy, I was too caught up in the moment to pay much attention. One big flag was that I always ended up footing the bill whenever we went out. Mark had a knack for conveniently forgetting his wallet or coming up with reasons why he couldn't pay. If he did borrow money, it was like throwing it into a black hole. I never saw it again. But hey, I was happy to have someone to hang out with, so I brushed it off. Our hangouts evolved from coffee shops and cinemas to chilling at each other's places. Since Mark still lived with his folks, my place became our go-to spot. He loved hanging out at my place, especially Richard's gaming room. Our house was pretty sweet. We had a pool, a man cave, and a gaming room Mark adored. He could spend hours in there, lost in games and enjoying the setup. We'd chat, watch movies, and just have a blast together. It was like having a buddy around whenever I needed one. As Mark and I spent more time together, our friendship took on a playful, flirty vibe. We'd tease each other, exchange witty banter, and throw in some playful compliments here and there. It was all in good fun, at least that's what we said. We promised to never cross any lines or take our banter seriously. I was married and didn't want to cheat on my husband, so at first we never went beyond flirting. But we kept joking around and teasing each other. Things started to get real. Our banter turned into serious flirting, and it felt like we were back in high school, all giddy and excited. Then one day when Mark was hanging out at my place, things went further than they should have. I had been joking around casually with Mark and then I sat on his lap as I joked. But then he would let me get up. One thing led to another and before I knew it we were making out and I was kissing him and tugging him to my room. After that intense moment with Mark I was freaked out. It felt good but I was also terrified. I kicked him out and blocked him fearing my husband might somehow find out. Guilt hit me hard. But a few hours later I caved in and unblocked Mark. We talked and it turned out we both wanted more. We decided to keep it quiet, especially since Richard wasn't home much. We could sneak around without anyone knowing. That's where things took a wrong turn. With Mark around, I didn't feel alone anymore. It was like he became my go-to instead of Richard. Whenever Richard was out, Mark would come over and we'd act like a couple, doing things that should have been reserved for Richard and me. We would have sex right in the room that I shared with Richard. We would watch movies, cook together, and just hang out. It felt wrong and I know it was cruel, but the thrill overshadowed any guilt I had. As time went on, I found myself tangled up in this affair with Mark. It was like living a double life, playing the role of a happy wife with Richard while sneaking around with Mark for excitement and fulfillment. Our meetings and hangouts became even more frequent and daring, and it always happened whenever Richard was out of town or busy. I just couldn't resist the temptation, even though guilt was always lingering in the back of my mind. Emotionally, Mark and I also grew closer. We shared intimate conversations, revealing parts of ourselves that I never shared with Richard. It created this bond that felt real and comforting, and it made me question my feelings and loyalty to my marriage. As more time passed, I started to question my commitment to Richard and the life we had built together. Mark was like my escape from the boringness and loneliness I felt in my marriage. He made me feel alive and desired in ways I hadn't experienced in a long time. Despite my deepening connection with Mark and the thrill he brought into my life, my love for Richard remained strong. I valued the stability and comfort Richard provided. He was reliable, hardworking, and had a promising future ahead, unlike Mark, whose life seemed way more uncertain and risky. But Mark's charm and ability to manipulate situations often clouded my judgment. He had a way of making things seem acceptable, even when I knew deep down they were wrong. He convinced me that our affair was harmless and was just a temporary escape from the routine of marriage. 
I desperately wanted to believe him. I needed reassurance that what I was doing wasn't morally wrong, that I wasn't betraying Richard's trust in the worst way. Mark's persuasive words became a lifeline, and it fed into my doubts and insecurities about my relationship. He assured me that we were too clever for Richard to ever suspect anything, that our affair was discreet and foolproof. He made me believe that Richard wouldn't even consider the possibility of infidelity. I should have seen through Mark's lies and manipulation. It was foolish of me to believe that we could carry on without Richard ever finding out. By the time Richard discovered our affair, Mark and I had been together for months. Mark's assurances had made me have a false sense of security and that made me lazy and stupid in covering my tracks. Our routine had become so careless. Richard's work trips became opportunities for Mark to spend long periods at our home, sometimes even staying overnight. I had grown used to Mark's presence to the point where I didn't bother hiding any evidence of our relationship. I let my guard down thinking that Richard would never suspect a thing. On the day Richard was supposed to leave for a two-day trip, I was excited at the fact that I would spend uninterrupted time with Mark during those two days. I played the role of the supportive wife, helping Richard pack his bags, driving him to the airport, and told him goodbye with a smile on my face. Little did I know that this would be the beginning of the end of my deception. I had already informed Mark about Richard's supposed trip before I drove Richard to the airport, so I expected Mark to be on his way home by the time I returned. As predicted, Mark arrived just 30 minutes after I got back. By then, we were so accustomed to our routine that Mark knew his way around our house without any hesitation. I had casually mentioned to Mark that Richard would be away for two days, so he brought his overnight bag along. We had breakfast together and enjoyed each other's company while watching a movie. And after we finished eating, the mood shifted and we both wanted to have sex. We started making out and then moved to the bedroom. However, we were so busy we didn't even notice when Richard had unexpectedly come back home. He had never left for any trip. It was all a plan to catch me red-handed. As we were still busy having sex, the bedroom door burst open, which shocked us both. I screamed in shock and I instinctively tried to cover myself. Surprisingly, Richard remained calm and composed. Mark, realizing the gravity of the situation and that we were busted, hastily gathered his clothes and rushed to leave, even stumbling in his hurry. Richard made no attempt to stop him. He simply watched as Mark hastily left the house. Meanwhile, I was left feeling utterly ashamed and exposed, and I was still desperately trying to conceal my body and hide from Richard's piercing gaze. After Mark bolted out in a frenzy, I heard him scream. It was such a gut-wrenching scream, the kind of scream that came directly from your lungs. I quickly covered up and rushed outside to see what was wrong and maybe deal with the mess. Mark's screams were like a punch in the gut. It was chaos. It was a total disaster. Mark's car was on fire, flames dancing, smoke billowing, and Mark, a total mess of emotions. Mark didn't park directly in our compound as we didn't want anyone spotting his car in the compound and mentioning it to my husband, so he usually parked not too far from our house. I rushed back into our to grab our fire extinguisher like my life depended on it, hoping it would be enough to put out the fire. The heat was crazy and I was sweating so much. My sweat even began to mix with panic as I battled against the flames. We had wanted to call the fire safety department, but ultimately we put out the flames and there was no need to call them. Mark was crying at this point, which now that I think about it is hilarious. He even tried to blame me for the whole ordeal and I had to remind him that I didn't light the fire. My mind was racing, I was trying to make sense of it all. The truth was staring me in the face. This wasn't some accident. Someone had deliberately set Mark's car on fire and the timing was just too perfect. Richard's absence during all this was suspicious. He has stayed inside the house and didn't even come out even when he heard Mark screaming. I knew deep down that Richard had been the one to do it. A car didn't just suddenly engulf itself in flames. Richard must have been the one to set it on fire before coming into the house. Mark cried his heart out, saying his car meant the world to him. He accused Richard of setting it on fire but had no proof to back it up. I left him to deal with his mess and went back inside, where Richard was calm and collected, cooking in the kitchen. It hit me then that Richard had caught me red-handed cheating a few minutes ago. I tried crying and pleading, hoping Richard would forgive me, but he was firm. He gave me 10 minutes to pack up and leave or face eviction. I scrambled to gather my things and carry them out to the porch. I cried relentlessly, but Richard remained unmoved and he literally banged the door on me. Desperate, I tried calling Mark for shelter, but he had already left and abandoned his burnt car, or maybe B was going to get it towed. He didn't answer my calls and 30 seconds later he sent me a text, blaming me entirely and cutting ties with me telling me to never ever send him a message again. 
I felt utterly lost. I had nowhere to turn. My family was hours away, and I wasn't sure if they'd even take me in. Richard seized the car keys and had denied me from taking any of his cars. With Mark also shutting me out, I reached out to an old friend who reluctantly agreed to let me stay for just a week. I had to grab an Uber to get to my friend's place because I had nothing left. To add insult to injury, Mark had emptied our joint account, leaving me broke and penniless. I messaged him, practically begging him to leave me something, but he refused, claiming it was all his hard-earned money. My friend had to help me pay the Uber. Now I'm at my friend's, feeling like a total wreck. I've been crying non-stop, regretting every choice that led me here. That's why I'm here on Reddit, hoping someone has a clue on how I can fix the colossal mess I've made of my marriage. I know I've made a terrible mistake, and now, and I am facing the consequences of my actions, I'm torn between guilt, regret, and a desperate desire to salvage what's left of my relationship with Richard. I don't want to lose my husband. Any real advice would mean the world to me right now. Thanks for lending an ear. Update. Hey Reddit, things have been insane since my last post. I've been steering clear of the comments for a bit because they've been brutal. It's been roughly a week since I first shared my story, and the flood of DMs hasn't slowed down. The comments range from supportive to downright nasty, with many of you all pointing fingers at me. And I, I want to set the record straight. I'm not painting my husband as the bad guy. I'm just sharing my side of the story honestly. If he hadn't neglected me, maybe things wouldn't have gone down this path. But dwelling on blame won't fix anything. As for updates, not much has changed. I have to leave my friend's place soon and bounce between couch surfing and shelters. It's not ideal, but I'm trying to make do. My husband mentioned legal papers are on the way, so I'm bracing myself for that too. In the meantime, I'm taking up little gigs to save up enough money. My goal is to have a stable place to go after the divorce. I'm going to go back home to my parents. Going back home, even if it's post-divorce, would be a relief and would be better than homelessness. Update. Hey Reddit, quick update. I've been served with divorce papers. It's a bitter pill to swallow, but deep down I know it's probably for the best. I'll be heading to court soon to finalize everything. I'm ready to sign the papers because let's face it, I messed up big time. On another note, Mark hasn't reached out to me and honestly I don't expect him to. I realize now that I was just a temporary distraction for him, nothing more. It hurts, but I can't blame him for that. I blame myself for letting him back into my life despite knowing how toxic our history was. To keep afloat, I'm still juggling side gigs for some income. It's not much, but it's enough to keep me going. I'll probably share another update after the court proceedings. I don't want to dwell on the legal stuff, and hopefully it'll be swift since I've already agreed to sign the papers. Update. Hey Reddit, it's been a minute. I took a break from here because the comments were pretty harsh, to say the least but I also received some kind DMs asking about the outcome, so here's the final update. The court proceedings were straightforward. The divorce was finalized without much hassle since I had already signed the papers. It's official. We're divorced now. Before we went into the courtroom, I tried to talk to Richard, maybe sway him into thinking I was making a mistake, but he wouldn't even look at me. He expressed his disgust and told me bluntly that he was the one who set the car on fire, and in his eyes it was justified given what I had done. He said I deserved it for being so selfish and ungrateful. It hit me very hard, and I had a moment in the bathroom to let it all out, and by let it all out, I mean I cried a lot in the bathroom. Seeing Richard there made me realize how much I had missed him, but it's too late now, and I have to accept that. On the bright side, I managed to save enough money to come back home. My parents agreed to let me stay for a while, though they weren't happy about it due to what happened. They, along with everyone else, believe I brought this upon myself and that I deserve being divorced. And honestly, it stings that even my own family won't support me, but I just have to make do since I can't afford to move out now, so I can't argue with them. Job hunting is next on my agenda. Despite the huge gap in my resume, I'm hopeful I'll find something that pays the bills for now. This will probably be my final update. To those who offered support and kindness, thank you. To the rest, well, you can figure that out. Thanks for listening, everyone. Dear Redditors, there's nothing more painful than watching the home you fought hard to build being broken by your own partner. Sure, I am not a saint, but I did not expect my wife to throw away our 30 long years of relationship just because she wanted to feel young again. It's always easier to destroy things, but it's never easy to build them up. I still don't understand how three decades worth of dedication was broken in just a few weeks. My name is Paul and I'm a 50 years old man who is married to Florence, a 49 years old woman. Florence and I met when we were in college and we just hit it off immediately. We dated for five years and have been married for 25 years. 
We literally just celebrated our 25 years anniversary last weekend. I know you all are wondering why I'm writing this message when we just had a huge 25 years anniversary celebration. Well, my wife has decided to make decisions that are only breaking our marriage. She's cheating on me and I know it. I know it because I have caught her in the act many times. I just don't know why this is happening to me or why she is doing it. It does not make sense. She does not know that I know yet and that is only because I am taking my time to process what she did. I'll be needing advice from Reddit as I try to get to the bottom of this. I could just let her know now and end our marriage, but it's not that easy. 30 years of being with one person is not something you can just throw away. The man she is cheating on me with is young. Yes, he's very young. He should be at least 20 years younger than her. I'm certain if I had knocked her up when we were in college, she would have been able to give birth to his age mate. I'm disgusted by just thinking about it. The fact that our anniversary was just a few days ago makes me wonder if this whole thing has been going on long before our anniversary. My wife now sings in the shower and wears makeup. Listen, I'm not against makeup and I've never been against it. She can wear it if she wants, but I don't understand why she's suddenly wearing it after stopping for years. I mean, at first I thought she was just trying to experiment her youth all over again, but then I realized that she was wearing makeup to go see her new lover. I caught her sneaking out of the house many times in the night. I'd wake up and she'd be nowhere to be found in the house. I'm frustrated because I want to say something, but I just can't right now. I need to be patient to know my next steps. So far, I know she's cheating with a younger man and I know his name. I also know that she sneaked out of the house at night and came back at dawn. This is vital information I'd need when I finally want to catch her in the act. I'm not going to let her ruin our marriage without facing the consequences. I'm going to keep you guys updated every single chance I get. Please let me know the next steps I should take. Update, I'm super grateful to everyone that has taken their time to let me know what I should do. I've seen some very vital advice that I do not take for granted at all. Now let me let you all know what has been going on during these past few days. My wife has not stopped seeing her lover and things have intensified between them. She doesn't even try to hide the relationship. It's almost like she wants me to know she's cheating or she likes the adrenaline she's getting from it. Yesterday we were having dinner and then she asked me what I thought about oral sex. I was shocked and confused at the same time. I did not expect her to ask me such a question. My wife and I have never engaged in oral sex before, so I did not expect her to tell me one of her favorite sex activities is oral sex. I saw how she smiled and continued eating after she asked the question. She definitely wanted to get a reaction out of me, so I ignored her and continued eating my dinner. In the evening yesterday, she was in the shower moaning out loud. When I say she was moaning, I mean it. It was not a painful moan, it was sexual. I heard it loud and clear, and it was not just once. It kept recurring again and again. I even had to leave the room because I got annoyed. Some of you might ask why I did not go to the shower and see why my wife was moaning. That's because I already knew why she was moaning. I heard her talking to someone and I was sure it was a phone call because her phone was not in the bedroom. My wife was definitely calling her lover yesterday. The way she's disrespecting our marriage is very disgusting. She's not hiding any of it, and that's how I know that my wife must have been cheating on me for a very long time. Just like you all advised in the comments section, I'm going to try my best to catch her in the act by following her one of these days. If that does not work, I'll definitely confront her and see what kind of excuse she comes up with. I heard her over the phone planning a date with him. I think she's going to be sneaking out of the house tonight. I'm definitely going to see what she's up to. Before I forget, some of you asked if we have children. Yes, we do. We have two children, a boy and a girl. They are both in college now. That's all for today, guys. Expect another update soon. Update. My dear Redditors, I did as I promised and followed my wife out two nights ago. I think I made a very big mistake by following her because what I saw was very devastating. That night I had to pretend I was asleep before she left the house. She got dressed in a very revealing outfit, then she wore a coat over it and left the house. I got dressed after she left too and decided to go on foot. I don't have an exotic car. I have a truck. It's old and rusty and I'm 100% confident that if I'd taken that truck, I would have woken the whole neighborhood. It was hard to keep up with my wife on foot and at some point I lost her. I did not see her on the road again, so I got confused on where to go. 
It took time, but I was able to find out where she was. She called a taxi and left, so I had to call a taxi too. My taxi followed hers for almost 10 minutes and it was exhausting. She finally stopped at what seemed like a secluded neighborhood. I was worried for a minute because the neighborhood looked suspicious. I did not imagine that my wife chose a gangster as her boyfriend. I'd never seen him up close, but from the neighborhood we stopped at that night, I knew he had to be some young guy in a gang or something. My wife was not worried for her safety at all. She strolled into the neighborhood like she had lived there all her life. At that moment, I believed that my wife must have been under a spell. Yes, I know how delusional that sounds, but what do you expect me to say? I did not like the neighborhood or the sight of my wife greeting the neighbors like they were longtime friends. I felt disrespected and jealous. I'm still jealous even as I write this. Florence got into a particular house that was almost secluded from the rest. I had to hide behind a tree for a long time, waiting for her to come out. I hoped she would come out fast because, dear Redditors, I was in a very suspicious neighborhood. At that moment, I knew that if I was seen spying on my wife in a neighborhood she was very familiar with, I could have been beaten up. I did not trust my wife not to have me killed. She was already cheating on me, so I did not trust her at all. After almost an hour of waiting, she left the house with the man I'd seen her with before. They were smiling happily and his hands were wrapped around her shoulders. I will be very honest, he is a good looking man. He has strong muscles and very good teeth. He was also very touchy with her. He was touching almost all parts of her body at once as he whispered something into her ear. I watched as my wife blushed and practically snuggled her head on his shoulders. I was disgusted by how shameless my wife was. She did not even care to check if anyone was watching them. They acted like they were the only ones in the world. I felt like taking up a stone and throwing it at them. Rude. I know, but no one wants to see the woman they are married to blushing and snuggling up to a younger man like she was still in high school. I even began to suspect that my wife was stealing from me. Yes, I had every reason to suspect that. There could be a higher possibility that she was giving money to her new lover. The guy looked like a stripper who lost his way in life. Don't judge my ability to judge him. If you found your wife cheating on you, you definitely understand what I feel right now. I get what might have tempted her. He's young and all, but he looked like a bad idea. He had good looks, but I swear he looked like a criminal. Yes, Reddit, you read that right. I'm judging him. I'm fucking judging him. They were just touching, but it almost felt like I was watching porn. My wife grabbed his neck and kissed him. She kissed him slowly and passionately. I feel disgusted even writing this, and I have wished to once see everything I saw that night. I waited for them to finish that night so I could finally go because I had seen enough, but it did not end there. The young looking criminal guy grappid my wife's ass like the fool he was. My stupid wife did not try to stop him. She leaned into his touch and smiled from ear to ear. I was fucking pissed. The fact that my wife and I had sex the night before and she was doing that with no conscience at all made me very disgusted. The stupid guy grabbed her hands, then whispered something in her ear again. My wife nodded her head, and then they went back inside. I don't think I need to read my faith to know what they sent back inside to do. I was already full, so I turned around and headed back for the road. I almost got caught by two guys who were sitting around smoking. They stopped me and asked who I was and what I was doing there. I had to lie that I was a delivery man who came to deliver pizza. I practically ran from there that night. When I got home, I could barely contain the anger I felt. All because of my wife, I had to lie to claim I was a delivery man. Not once in my life did I imagine myself sneaking after my wife at night. My dear Redditors, do you see how fucked up this whole thing is? I don't even know what to do. Imagine the amount of anger and annoyance I feel right now. That night, I almost broke our wedding picture and threw it out. I wanted to pack my wife's belongings outside the house at that very moment. I practically watched her sexually interact with another man. I was there, and I watched it live and direct. I don't need any facts or investigation. I don't need any evidence. I saw it with my own eyes. There's nothing my wife could say that would validate any of what she did. It was not her being drunk, and it was not a one-time thing. For her to know the neighbors in that neighborhood, it had to have been going on for a very long time. She has been cheating on me way before our anniversary. 
I don't need to have any evidence at all. That night, I made sure I thought of a plan before my wife came back home. I wanted to find out more about her cheating and why she was doing it. The betrayal I felt was very bad. I was practically heartbroken because of what I saw. My wife and I have been married for too long. She should have thought about that before doing what she did. When my wife came home in the morning, I was tempted to ask her where she had been. I was so close to confronting her, but I had to control myself. I did not want to confront her, then have her lead in my face or try to defend her actions. I have seen many movies of how cheaters turn everything around. This was not a movie, but I did not want to underestimate my wife at all. I knew that our children were going to be coming back home from their college break, so I had to hatch up a plan first. I planned to expose her in front of our children and see just how embarrassed she would be. Yes, I do not have a conscience in this regard. I plan to be as ruthless as she is. But first, I want to ask my dear Redditors what you all think. Do you all think it's better for me to confront Florence and let her know I know she's cheating or it's better I just expose her in front of our kids? These are the two options I've been stuck with for the past few days. To be honest, living with my wife under my roof and sharing the same space with her has been very hard. I don't even care about her touch or laugh at her stupid jokes. I'm disgusted by every single thing she's been doing. I think this is why it's better to confront her and let her know that I know the truth. That way, she can stop pretending and acting like everything is all right when it's not. She's acting like a teenage girl who's love struck. A woman who has two children and has been married for over 25 years should know better. If I expose her in front of my kids, I will not feel a single bit of guilt. I'll act nonchalantly the same way she acted nonchalantly when her criminal looking lover groped her ass in front of people. If anyone knew me in that neighborhood, they'd think I'm the biggest fool to exist on this planet. What irks me more is the fact that she had the audacity to pretend like she loves me and is not cheating on me. If I did not know about her cheating, I'd have foolishly thought my wife was falling in love with me all over again, lol. So my dear Redditors, please let me know what you think I should do. All your comments are very much appreciated and I'd love nothing more than to reply to all of them if I have the chance. This is very important to me, guys. Please help me. Update. My dear Redditors, I see that this post has gotten a lot of recognition. Thank you all for your wonderful ideas and suggestions. I'm really thankful to you all. This experience has been traumatizing, but the funny comments of all the Redditors had me laughing out loud. I did not expect some of the names Florence is being called in the comments. Even her criminal boyfriend was not spared at all. I like that very much, LL. Well, it's time for me to give you guys an update. Most of you suggested that it's better I confronted my wife first before letting my children know. I thought about it a lot, and after some time, I believed that was the best option too. Some of you also said it's better I follow my wife to her lover's house and catch them red-handed before confronting her, so I'd have a lot of evidence to back up my claims. I mean, what better evidence than being caught in the act? I really liked the idea, so I decided to go with it. It took me time to know what my wife was up to because she started hiding to make her calls. I believe that she got suspicious and decided to hide when calling her lover. I did not let that stop me, though. It took time, but I was finally able to eavesdrop on her conversation with him. I found out they were planning to meet up at his friend's apartment. I was happy to hear that because I did not want to go back to that neighborhood again. The chances of them catching me the second time was very high. On the day of their planned date, my wife did something that surprised me. I was practically spooked at how confident she was when she stood in front of me and lied to my face. She told me she was going to get some gifts for our children that were going to be back in two weeks. I asked her if she was sure and she said yes. She even asked me if I wanted to go with her to get the gifts. That was intentional on her part because she was very aware of the fact that I had to be at work that day. She knew I could not say yes, so that was why she asked. I pretended to be sad I could not follow her, then bade her goodbye. I did not go to work that day and already told one of my colleagues to cover for me. I did not follow my wife immediately because I checked her phone the previous day and knew exactly where she was going to meet up with her lover. I spent another hour hailing a taxi and going to the address I'd seen on her phone. When I got to the apartment, I was very angry. I didn't even know why I suddenly got angry all over again. The fact that my wife had the nerve to lie to me that morning was very disgusting. 
My dear Redditors, you needed to have seen how my veins were practically protruding on my neck. Who would have thought that a 50-year-old man like me would have to go around looking for his 49-year-old wife because he found out she's cheating on him with a man much younger than him? I felt embarrassed on my behalf as I made my way to the door of the apartment. I still remember the looks people were giving me because I spent a lot of time at the door, contemplating whether I was making the right decision or not. I stopped second-guessing myself when I heard the sounds that were coming out of the apartment. I could hear the disgusting moans and stifled screams, and it was just too much for me to stomach. I did not think twice before banging on the door. The moans stopped immediately, and then I could hear the tussle inside. At that point, they were struggling to get dressed. The criminal-looking guy even cussed and hissed. The fool had the audacity to tell Florence that whoever was at the door had to have come for important business, or else he would punch them in the face. The guy had the audacity to say that to a woman he was not even married to. Immediately, the door was unlocked. I had to hold in the punch that I wanted to land in the guy's face. He was in his boxer briefs and his hair was ruffled. Even a 14-year-old child could guess what they had going on before I came there. My dear Redditors, you cannot even imagine that the guy had the audacity to ask me what the fuck I wanted. I did not speak at first because I had to stare at his face and whole body just to imagine what had gotten into my wife. I had to ask myself what went wrong that she decided to shake our home because of the young guy who looked like he did not have his life figured out. I took a deep breath and asked the guy where my wife was. You all cannot imagine how nonchalant he looked even after I called Florence my wife. He leaned on the door and raised his brows. He even went as far as stroking his chin and eyeing me up and down. I was surprised when he said, so you are the old man that does not know how to handle a woman. I was enraged. How could a boy I was practically capable of giving birth to ask me such a question? I had to control myself that day because I knew that it was not his fault. If he had the audacity to say that to me, then it was my wife who gave him the liberty to do so. She must have been saying degrading things about me to him. My dear Redditors, can you imagine that? When I found out my wife was cheating many weeks ago, I was heartbroken, but I never imagined that she'd go as far as saying awful things about me to her lover. Who does that? The funny part is that she told him I could not handle her. I feel disgusted. Maybe my wife is really a child in an adult body. I'm sorry for deviating, guys. I just had to use this medium to vent out the anger I felt after that stupid boy said those words to me without any hint of fear. After he said those words to me, I pushed him back into the apartment. He almost lost his footing because he was surprised and ended up on the couch. I searched around for my wife and found her struggling to put her bra on. You needed to see how messy her hair looked. She looked like a fucking whore. Yes, I said it. I called my wife a whore and I'm not afraid to say it again. When I saw how dirty she looked, I could not help but lose the little respect I had for her. When our eyes met, I could see the embarrassment in them but not once did I see a single trace of guilt in her eyes. She finally got her bra on, then raised her head up high like she had won a Nobel Prize. I shook my head in disgust and asked her, is this the gift you want to give our children when they get back? My dear Redditors, my shameless wife shook her head and told me she could explain. I had to laugh immediately because I found it very funny. Every single person caught cheating seems to feel the need to explain. Explain what? Explain how you decided to open your legs for a man you're 20 years older than just because you wanted to cheat on your own husband. I called her a whore right there and then. Her little plaything had the audacity to tell me, don't you dare call her a plaything. I felt like snapping his tattooed head in half, but I didn't. Not because I didn't want to, but because I knew I would not win a fight with him. He is young and agile. I might not be old, but my bones are definitely not the same. I also didn't want Florence to get the idea that I was fighting for her. I would have been very stupid if I gave her that satisfaction of watching her plaything and her husband wrestling it out. She was a fucking fool and I had to let her know she was not worth my time or strength. I left the apartment immediately because I'd seen exactly what I wanted to see. Thankfully, I did not feel that heartbroken that day. Maybe it was because I'd seen her with him many times before, or maybe it was because I already knew she had been cheating on me. My wife only came back home two hours later. Do you know what that means? She was not afraid to stay back and finish what they had started. 
That just shows how she has no fucking respect for our marriage. I was devastated to see her walk into the bedroom confidently. I stood up from the bed and asked her to get the fuck out of my house. She told me I was acting irrationally and that I needed to give her time to explain. I was not interested in listening to her explanation and I made that clear to her, but she was relentless. She told me that even if I had not caught her cheating, she planned to let me know by herself. She said she was sorry for cheating on me, but she does not regret it. Yes, Redditors, she said that. The woman I've been married to for 25 fucking years had the audacity to look me in the eye and tell me she did not regret cheating on me. What's more disrespectful than that? It took all the self-control I had in me not to do something I ended up regretting. If I was in her shoes as a man and I looked into my wife's eyes and told her I didn't regret cheating on her, what would I be called? A liar, cheater, heartless man, blah, blah, blah. Yet, she did not hesitate to open her fucking mouth and say all those disrespectful words. Florence said she didn't cheat just to spite me and that she had her reasons for cheating, don't they all? She said she wanted to feel alive and free again. She wanted the excitement and adrenaline of her youth and was not getting it from me, so she cheated. She told me that she felt older than her age many times in our marriage and she hated the idea that we'd been married for 25 years and have been together for 30 years. Florence proceeded to say that she did not like the idea of being stuck with one man for the rest of her life. She needed to explore her life and do whatever she wanted to do with herself. You know what, guys? I've never really understood why people that cheat think they always have some sort of valid reason to do so. It's the most disrespectful thing ever. If you are tired of your partner and want to live freely, why don't you just let them know? Is it not better to break things off with them or get a divorce rather than lying to their face or cheating on them? Why do people always think it's okay to cheat and lie than come up with the world's most useless excuses? My wife is one of those stupid people. I asked her why she did not let me know that she was tired of our marriage and wanted to feel young again. I asked her why she felt the need to cheat on me with a stupid young boy that spoke like a fool. I did not hold back that day. I cussed at her and called her names. I made sure she felt the heat of what she did to me. I even asked her if she had been cheating on me before our 25th wedding anniversary and she said yes. That was when I lost it and started throwing things around. She practically blindsided me and made a fool out of me in front of all the people we loved. Do you know the worst part, Redditors? Florence was the one who was in charge of planning our anniversary. I left all the plans to her and she was the one that executed everything. Can you imagine that she pretended to be so happy and in love with me? We danced around, cut cakes, and even said our vows again. How disgusting can a person be to do that when they were cheating on their partner? Florence said she didn't plan to cheat and that it just happened. She could not resist the temptation because she had longed for the youthful feeling and adrenaline for a long time. I got disgusted and tired of listening to her, so I sent her packing immediately. I practically threw her clothes out of the closet and pushed her out of the room. She tried asking me if she could stay the night, but I refused. I was not that foolish. After everything she said that day, I was sure that I wanted nothing to do with that woman again. That night, after I threw her out, I had to break all our wedding frames and throw them out of the house. I made sure I cleared every single trace of her in that house. I did not want any memories of her lying around my house. I spent hours thinking about what I wanted to do. I knew I did not want to stay married to her, but I did not want to divorce her. If I filed for divorce, I might be the one to part with some of my money. The court doesn't really care who cheated on who. The woman had an upper hand in the court, and that is a fact. I am not a rich man who has houses or cars around the globe, but I am not ready to give a dime to that scheming bitch. I'd rather die than let a single cent of my hard-end money go to her. My children are coming back home in a few days and I don't know what to do. I want to tell them their mother is a cheat. One is 21 and one is 19, so there will be no need to fight for custody. They are also in college, so there will be no reason to make schedules and decide where they spend the weekends. I don't know how to tell my children what has been going on. I don't even know if I should tell them at all. I'm stuck between not filing for a divorce and filing for a divorce. I'm also stuck with thinking of how to break the news to my children. I'm not the one who cheated, but I'm practically the one facing the consequences of someone else's actions. 
I need your help once again, my dear Redditors. My wife has left me between a rock and a hard place. There is practically no reasonable solution in my head right now because I am still in shock. I did not expect things to unfold this way after 30 years of knowing Florence. I honestly believed that we would be together for the rest of our lives. There are no words to describe the level of disappointment, shock, and anger I feel right now. I need the advice of my fellow Redditors now more than ever. Please help me get rid of this huge problem. Update. Whew, what a year it has been. I cannot believe that it's been exactly one year since I made this post. Time does really fly. I am beyond thankful to Reddit as a platform and the Redditors that make this platform a safe space for anyone and everyone. You all are always ready to help, no matter how complicated the situation is. It's also very comforting that you all share your own stories and experiences in the comments too. For someone like me who began to question why I was going through that predicament in my life, it felt good to see other people telling me I'm not alone. I cannot thank you all enough. I'm also sorry that it took me one long year to make an update to this post. It's been a crazy year. A year that changed every single thing I thought was part of my life. So my children eventually got back from college, and like most of you suggested, I told them what had been going on. My children were very shocked to hear everything that happened, considering the fact that they celebrated our anniversary with us. They sympathized with me and made me feel a lot better, to be honest. Florence was still their mother and I did not guilt trip them into seeing her as someone else. Our family was broken, but my children made me feel much more alive. They took me out to go see movies and they even had cooking classes with me. Florence moved in with her lover and the children visited them once in a while. I was very hurt and it took me a lot of time to come around, but eventually I did. I have decided not to file for divorce because I do not want any legal battle at all. I don't want to be the first one to file for a divorce. I want Florence to file for divorce whenever she wants to. Thanks to my children, I started going on casual dates three months ago. They told me it was better I dated other people so I would not feel too lonely at home. I listened to them and it was great. My first few dates did not really go anywhere substantial, but after some more dates, I met someone I was interested in. We've been dating for one month now and it's been great. I plan on asking her to move in with me if we date for up to one year. I really like her, and it's cool that we are actually the same age. She has children too, and it's nice to have someone you share common interests with. Well, my dear Redditors, life has been good for the most part. I've been able to move past the ugly experience I had with my wife. She chose to cheat on me because she wanted to feel young, free, and sexy. Well, I hope she got what she wanted. I really don't care about her any longer. It's been a very enlightening year, but I'm most grateful for the Eep friends I made on Reddit. Your funny comments and outrageous ideas are beyond extraordinary. Some of you have the wildest imaginations ever. You all are the best. I'm looking forward to reading your own life experiences, positive, I hope, and just seeing where the journey of life takes us. What a ride it has been. It was not bump-free, but it was worth it.